Hello everyone and welcome back to Perback. So episode 19 now. Uh, a few changes I've made just off camera. Uh, first thing I've done was get all the grass bales that we had laying around here. Um, excess ones I've got stacked up here and they're going to go get sold. And then in here I've basically organised them a bit better. So we've got our hay bales just on the right here. Good to make up for mixing. And then all the grass bales are wrapped up. And I've got them all uh, stacked up in here nice and neat, uh, fermented. So, there's a bit of a mess in the yard, so I've got things organised a bit better. We've still got um, some silage out in the field, just down there you'll see. So, we'll use up those ones first, because they're just saying we have to bring them up and down from the field uh, at this current time. And then what I've done is I've um, put in a cell point. So, I mentioned it in a couple of videos back. Um, it's not ideal. But I can't remember the mod. I had a mod installed place anywhere. So I could place inside the shop area. But for some reason it's been removed from the mod hub. And I can't seem to find it anywhere. But I did mention this uh, farm here has got a uh, sack of bales here. Built onto the map. So what makes sense. They essentially will be a farm that buys bales. So what I've done is I've had, I did have to buy the land. Um, I just had to cheat the money in. Since I bought the land we're back to what we was left with before. And then I put in this mod here, it's called a sell mobile bell sell point. So I can now sell bells uh, at this location here. It's not ideal because there's only one point I can sell them at. But hopefully in the future um, I can find the mod and we can add in uh, a sell point into the uh, shops for bells. Because you know it's a pretty heavy map for grass. So it's a bit bizarre you can't actually sell um, bales anywhere. Moving on from that, uh, I messaged uh, MS Modding about the UK Geo. I found the link on uh, King Mods to work towards Disturb Simulations video. And it looks like on his Facebook page, he's implemented that into the game. Um, you can do it yourself if you wanted to. Uh, because I'm mid-play for I didn't want to sort of do it as I've just put some seed in the ground. So essentially, there's a UK Geo. And um, you can now plant around these times here. And opens up more windows to plant around the UK geo based time. So you're not limited to sort of October, September, late in the year for uh, wheat and barley. And a few extras as well you can out now plant. So just check out on Google or YouTube Disturb Simulations uh, UK Geo. And you'll find the video and a link of how you can actually uh, do that yourselves. If you wanted to add it to this map. But it will come now with the um, version that gets released. So that's good news all around. Another mod I've got myself is uh, from Farmer Andy, so we've got a little bicycle here. And we've also got the um, bicycle trailer and the barrel. Now I was doing a bit of testing just now. What we have here is a um, water barrel. So a lot easier, we can just push it around the farm nice and easy. Just hit E and then hit R to refill, which I've put in this point here. That's not there before. So refill the water here and then I can just hit I. And it will refill that uh, nice and quick. So I did do a few loads earlier just to get things moving. Uh, we're at 2,000 litres of water now. Which um, should be plenty for a few months at least. Again, I mean in theory you'd probably refill this almost daily. But it will last us quite a while. Especially for 20 cows. And they're coming over now to get some water. So we'll leave it as that. And now the plan I've also got actually is this wheelbarrow. Really good little mod. Save again, having to bring in the front loader um, with a huge bucket. What I can do now, I don't know why it's got an auto load and horse bay on this. Um, it does. So, all you do, from what I can remember, can hit Control Y. And there you go, nice and simple. It will do that until you hit uh, Control Y again, though. But it's a lot easier, you know, makes more realistic sense to have a wheelbarrow. You would bring the big bucket in every time. Downside is, so I can't currently uh, put this into um, the BGA directly. What we can do, I believe you hold right mouse. Is it left mouse? So, left mouse, sorry. And you just basically can tip it like so. And then I can just make a new pile over here. And then when I go to load up my manure, from the pit, there'll be a pile there waiting for me and I can just uh, manually put that in. So a good little touch. 
we'll do that now actually again there's only a thousand litre capacity not even that sorry 270 litres but it adds a bit more realism to the game if you really want that uh, fact as well of course you can get a bucket if you wanted to but I think we'll do it this way just for now But that is that mod there. Um, again, we'll come back to that later on. We'll be all day. Probably speed up time for that. Just while we're doing the, uh, the motions of that option. Because there's quite a lot of manure piled up here. Now, the main part today is we are going to start finally getting our milk uh, moved across. I've, I've made a start already on the productions. So we're going to do some cheese at the farm. Homemade cheese. And try and sell that and get ourselves a contract with a... Uh, the Mole Valley Farmers, if we can, which I actually went to the other day in my uh, in my area. Very good. Got some really good stuff. Nice bit of uh, meat and some milk and stuff. So, yeah, definitely recommend Mole Valley Farmers in real life. I think he's named it Whole Valley Farmers on the map. Um, yeah, Mole Valley, but on the actual sign it says Whole Valley. I think maybe that's sort of copyright, maybe I'm not too sure. But what we can do with this uh, barrel... If you change view, and you can see 500 litres in there, and then um, left control and left will close that off. You need to have that open to actually fill it up with milk or water. Uh, I just just leave it open, and there's a little nozzle on the end there. So all you do, move up to your point, and you start overloading. Simple as that. And again, there's also a little trolley here. So I can start moving pallets as well in the future um, into a truck area. So yeah, that really good. It's nice not after you know you constantly be using heavy machinery just to move a couple pallets here and there. Not using a uh, cheats either, sort of super strength. And you can hear it's ticking away there. We've got the uh, cheese going along. So what I'll do, we're gonna do a bit of a test first. We're gonna see how actually how long it takes, how much money we get for the milk we're going to throw in um, so we've got quite a bit in this barn actually uh, let's have a look so the cow barn we've got oh, 15,000 litres so a fair amount of milk um, that will keep me going for a long time and then TMR is looking good as well and the water is now 3,500 litres so that will keep me going for a few weeks so we'll throw in about 5,000 litres or so in the production show you what I've done so cheese activated and we've got 1600 litres in there and free milk will give us two cheese but the cheese give us, does give us more money we can do it way back here if we wanted to obviously it's not ideal because it just goes into mid air but at least uh, you know gets the point across it's not as fast but I didn't really want to have to get a big Anchor just to move it from A to B here. You know, in theory, you'd probably just carry the cartons across the little uh, jugs there. So, this is the sort of like next best thing we can do. It's a bit slow, there's no like you can't hold shift like games, you can run and sprint with it. Um, but it does the job, so I quite like it. But of course one thing we are going to need, I mean yes we can rely on the um, cheese to make the money. It's going to take some time um, and we do need a bit of sell, sort of to sell some milk ideally uh, in the near future. And the plan as well is summer, sort of spring summer is on the horizon. We're in spring now, May 1st. We need to get ourselves as a uh, forage harvester and start doing some grass work. So this is on loads. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to get this field here as a uh, silage field, essentially. So there's two ways we can do this. We can get a forage harvester and have a bit of auto drive and course play going. Um, which I think I'd like to try and do as a bit of practice as well. It's a pretty large field as well. Or we can do it as normal, we'll mow it, ted it, well not ted it, sorry, and just row it up. And then we can buy ourselves either A one of these forage wagons again we've got quite quite a large amount of money now um, from the field sale 
But if you're looking at a big one, you know, against drop 100k on that one there. Um, so we need to be careful what we do, really. So there's that option there. Downside to that is we're limited then to just one. Unless we buy a couple. Or we can use the trailer we've already got up here. And we can unload the bunkers. I did remove the bunkers as well because um, I thought they were a bit too small. But then when I went to replace them, I didn't really find any I liked. So I'm going to keep my own extra bunkers and then we'll put them in once we uh, find the right ones. I think the right size. Because I think the ones that had the amount of grass we've got here, it's gonna be, they're going to get full quite quickly. But we've got the other field over there as well we can rely on. Um, one more thing we have got is uh, a mod, a little, a little mod I found, a forge I believe it's installed, is these are uh, class dragger ones, so a bit cheaper, so 100k that one there, um, quite a small little mod, it's, I mean it's not overly detailed, it looks a bit bulky and chunky and square, but I mean the price we're paying does a job um it's not that bad actually got a detail on the engine there the back looks a bit chunky maybe it is that way in real life again i'm not a real farmer i don't know i wouldn't see these things in future um we can increase the horsepower but i don't really think we need to just yet change the wheels and again if we want to go a bit bigger that one's a manual pipe i believe and the biggest one there is 165,000, which we can just about afford if we get another energy bucks. And I also found this really old school one there. Um, it is pretty old school, isn't it? So there's this option here, a bit more cost effective. But I'm not quite sure how well this will hold up for the farm, but we have got a lot of old kit, so it makes sense that we, uh, you know, keep it the theme, get this old kit. Got a blue one there, but like the Ford. But I mean, you basically got to pay to change the colour essentially, 500 bucks. So there's that option there, but I mean it could be quite slow. I think what we'll do is we'll go, try and go as modern as we can. I'm not quite sure the difference on these though. Um, manual pipe, I guess we can just turn it ourselves. And then we've got the Jaguar here as well. Um, so I think we'll go for that one there, but not just yet. We'll, what we need to do first, obviously, is the grass is ready to harvest. This had no um, treatment to it, expected yield 64%. And what we could do potentially is give it a spray with some fertilizer, any leftover fert, just to give it a bit of a boost. Um, probably wouldn't hurt it. I mean, we've got a soil sample for this one, let's have a look. And again, it's going to come under a handful of uh, fields here, just due to the fact that they come as a bundle. So for, how much is it for soil information? 15,000, Jesus. And again, we don't actually know any of this, how good the lime is and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to think now. I think based on the amount of cows we've got, as it is now, the field's pretty big. So I think we'll leave it for now. And we'll see how much yield we get for the first load. We can do one in spring and then uh, do it a larger one. Um, in summertime, we can always fertilize it once it grows back. So I think what we'll do is get some mowing done. So we haven't done some mowing for a while, actually. I think I've someone to auto drive, so just need to make sure I get rid of these little menus here for now. So we'll grab the older uh, John Deere one here. Now I am still making some adjustments to my uh, mic, and I've got this bit better fix on the desk now, but I am on the steering wheel now, so hopefully the audio doesn't cut out too much. Um, still waiting to get my uh, shelf mounted to the wall if you haven't seen my um but depends what comes up first i've got my uh desk set of video coming soon and you'll see what i mean by my shelf on the wall it depends what i publish first this one or the uh setup tour basically i've got a block of wood i'm going to mount to the wall so the mount itself is not on the desk so we've got to remember how we're doing this now
Now I think the problem we're going to have potentially is the edge of this field is where do we put the limit to? Um, I know if we do a course play route, they might recognise the whole field. Let's just see what because with the harvester, those trees might be in the way. So let's just give it a quick try. I'm going to do this manually. Um, let's create a job. Yeah, so it's going to recognise literally every little bit of the field. So we go. So we might need to remove these trees, um, potentially. They might get caught in a few things, especially oh, get lose there. This corner here could be a little bit tricky. It does go right into the corner there, doesn't it? Um, so if we do use a forage harvester, we might have to use follow me. But you no, know, we'll figure that out when we come to it. And then see how tight it goes to this fence as well. Um, it's got a bit of a wide berth, but it could, as long as the mirror's on the right hand side, it should be okay, I think. But we'll see how it gets on if we do come to do it manually. Anyway, let's uh, let's crack on. That will do, because there's quite a large field and big mowers. We'll just see how work gets on. Let's just hit B. Or H, sorry. Let's just let him do his thing. And we'll go grab another tractor and help him out. Okay, so I'm back in. I uh, just had a play with the uh, multiple tools on course play. I've never actually run this before. So, my first one, the slower tractor is at the front, and he's basically click there, I'll go to the right. So, he's on the right hand side. Very similar to follow me, you've got the offsets, and then uh, the forwards at the back. And luckily, he's not going, he's keeping his speed and his distance. He's not, if he catches up, he'll slow down. Um, what I've noticed then was that the offset due to the uh, offset on here was a bit off so it was leaving a bit of a gap here so it was down to around about uh, 4 I think you can see now it was leaving a bit of a gap in between so just make sure your back tractor is set to 0 um, it seems to be working for me so there's no gap in between apart from the corners a little bit there's a tiny bit there uh, but yeah that's essentially how I have done it so I'll just show you what I mean by the uh, offset being off on the rear tractor or the front tractor. As you can see here, it's uh, nice and smooth, no gaps in between. And then um, back here somewhere. This is why I went back and checked the one was okay. And you can see it's left a bit of a little row here, uh, which is not ideal due to the offset being off slightly. So just make sure you, um, yeah, just change your offset. Obviously a bit of a mess on the start there. Um, I've realised a little feature as well they've added. Not sure when this got put in. It gives you a time as well of how long it's going to take. Which is a nice little touch. Um, so again, 35 minutes it's taken uh, with course play. And mowing's a fairly simple task. It doesn't generally get caught up. So, you know, manually, one tractor at a time. You're probably looking about 30 minutes um, manually because you go a bit faster. And then add on the other 30. So six to an hour it would take by myself to do this. Um, so course play I've set up here. Because it's quite a large field. And I do want to get things moving uh, for this field in spring. On the smaller fields up at the top of the hill. We'll do them. On, we'll do those ourselves uh, in the future. So yeah, that's the uh, tractors now. Basically doing their thing. So one thing we're going to look at in the background. Is getting ourselves... That should show you how he's done on this tree. Look, it's gone around the tree quite nicely. Now we'll leave it there for now. Let's see what this rear one does. It might have to be a case of doing it uh, manually ourselves here. Oh, that, was right. that was pretty good. Course players definitely got better with collision to tell you that. Compared to AI workers, I mean, look what the AI did. Two rows and it was done. So really good there, around the tree. 
And a little bit of a gap on the fence. So yeah, I'm happy with that. We'll let them do their thing. So that should take about 30 minutes or so to get those this uh, field done. As I was saying, um, I do want to check is... Our... Uh, oh. uh, windrow. I do want to get a bigger one. Because it doesn't... It leaves rows almost the same as what the tractors are doing. But... It just, it just means a lot of up and downs collecting grass. So it's done okay. So again, it's a pretty small one. Um, I tell you it's pretty big. But I do want to look at getting a new one of these. Um, so we are going to take this, I think, down to the store. And uh, pick up ourselves a new one. So we are probably have to use a tractor here, actually, because there's the only one we've got available. Up at the farm. Just get rid of this quickly. Get rid of that. But it's probably not going to hurt to get this uh, tractor a good little run down to town. Nope, I was not looking where I was going then. Those uh, tucked away on the road. It might be a little bit bouncy. The weight on this tractor is not the biggest tractor in the world, but it is good to get this one out actually and give it an actual good, good drive. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to head down and we'll browse the shop and see what they have got in stock while the grass gets cut. Because, um, yeah, I do want some nice big chunky rows where we can go up and down nice and easy uh, in one big pass. So, I will see you uh, down the shop very soon. Hey, we are just coming up to the shop now. Just need to remember where the actual uh, point to sell is. Don't want to sell the tractor by mistake. Hopefully we can just do it here. Not quite there. Okay, so just needs to go in that zone now. I don't even see the uh, yellow squares there. So if we repair it for 28, 1517, we sell it for £8,945. So that's that one sold, and let's go see what they got in store. So we need ourselves a window. And of course, the one we just had was this one here, which is a 4.8 meter. Now uh, we've got a potting deer, 6.6 .6 meters here, which is quite nice. Uh, but I think we might struggle though to pull this back up with our tractor. Uh, 
So this one here, it must be a mod I've got installed, that's along the way. So an extra two meters that's going to give us, or well, more than two meters. Uh, we've got the Vermeer pack, um, but again I don't think there's any Vermeer in uh, the UK from what I'm aware. I think it's a big American company. 33,000 there, quite cheap. And again this one here is 50 meter, that's way up into the uh, 90,000 pounds price. 60,000 with this one. And that's not too bad, 9.7 meters on that one there. I'm not a fan of these ones because the way they uh, do it on the side. So this one here is a 8.4 meter. So as you know, almost double what we've got currently. There's this one here, 6.6 .6 meters. So it's not a whole lot more on width really is it this one it's quite a large bit of kit um, that one's very nice but very expensive um i think cost wise this one here is probably the best bet eight nineteen thousand just half the price of that one and it's not much distance in the older uh, spread so dublin base we've got now um, we'll lease, lease one because we've got the uh, buy to lease or lease to buy we'll lease this for now and if we don't like it we can just return it and get ourselves a new one All right. but the question is can we pull it back up the hill with this uh, tractor report down with us. Guess we'll find out. Let's just turn off our markers quickly. I think we're good. It's enough to pull it. Uh, it probably won't be enough to um, use it if we are using it on the fields. But it's enough to get us back to uh, the base. Okay, here we are back again. So I'm just going to use this side gate here, I think. Um, a bit more room to manoeuvre. I think the tractors should be, if that looks like they are, a little bit stuck on one another. That's why they've uh, stopped working. Just stop this guy. Okay, so that's the mowing done. Uh, again, not quite sure what happened with the offsets. It seems to work fine with the double implements on the uh, headlands. And then as soon as it got to the up and downs, they was leaving a bit of a gap. So I'll try and see if I can find a solution to the problem. If not, what we'll consider doing is getting the uh, even the mower that mounts on the front. So we've got a nice straight uh, cut then. 
make things easier for course play at least and in the near future maybe get the doubles on the back um, and that'll be done in minutes then the field will be done but I'm not quite sure if we can get a front load attached to this tractor here I have to look into that we should be able to because we've got a weight on the front so we can get one on the front for double mowing um, worst case we can just have the tractor here with one um, but yeah I think that will do us for today uh, for the mowing and then next episode we'll get those bales sold uh, we'll get road up and um, we'll just have a bit of a tidy up of the yard and then we'll look at getting ourselves a uh, combine I think we're going to go straight for the combine and get um, silage done so we'll get some new bunkers put in as well but what we might do now quickly is if there's space I might block to the entrance now is the uh, the bunkers I put down were initially these ones here but again they're a bit small Seven point five by four. I'm not sure the difference in these ones though. These are a bit deeper, maybe. Let's get that. I'm not sure about a duplicate on the mod there, maybe. Um, what's happened there? Oh, there's these ones here, a bit deeper. But that one's 25,000, 14 meters by five meters. This one's four meters wide. But yeah, I'll have a think and I'll decide which ones to put back in. Um, to might just stick these ones to us, because even though they're quite small, you can get quite a few in. Do you know I'm just going to put these back in. I'll, I'll adjust the money um, afterwards because they were previously in. Because I'll get, I'll just get a few of those. We can probably get four or five of them in. So it's not ideal in terms of the, the uh, depth. But yeah, we can get one, two, three, maybe four in there. So I think we'll leave it be. Um, but for now, that is uh, the episode done. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care. And I'll see you next time.